Good day and welcome to this week's episode of Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. I am your host, Rondel Dono, and once again, I'm happy to bring the law and you. Of course, you can stream us on all social media platforms, www.wesncc.com. So today we are speaking about adoption, the right to adopt and to be adopted. Of course, many of you may or may not know that we actually have adoption laws in Trinidad and Tobago, and one of the authority that deals with adoption is the Children's Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. So in studio today, my guest, Mr. Farai Hove Masaisai of Hove & Associates, will speak to us about this procedure as well as an interesting, interesting uh, decision from the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council relating to the fairness and the procedure of adopting uh, children, adolescents in Trinidad and Tobago. So I now welcome my guest, Mr. Farai Hovmasaisai. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Donawa. Thank you very much for having me and good morning to your, your listeners and viewers on WSN. And thank you very much for coming. Once again, I know the, the, yeah. the first time you were here was quite in February on our second episode yes. um, dealing with, with uh, another topic. Uh, first of all, I must say congratulations to you and your team for uh, this historic, I must say, uh, judgment from the Privy Council mm -hmm. relating to a judicial review decision um, surrounding adoption. Yes. And, and one of the one of the greatest thing I took from this, a quote from uh, uh, Justice Smith, is that if, as it is alleged, the appellant has behaved very badly or disgracefully, they can't then say, "Well, so what? The child has already been in care." That would be contrary to good administrative practice. Yes. I think that is resounding. And tell us a bit about one. I mean, I know we discussed judicial review. Yes. Um, so tell us exactly. What is adoption? How adoption laws work in Trinidad and Tobago? All right. Well, okay, so we have the Children's Authority. The Children's Authority is the sole adoption agency in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So if anyone wishes to adopt an orphan or a child, um, they must um, go through the Children's Authority. The Children's Authority is governed by the Children's Authority Act. And they are also governed in terms of their adoption proceedings by the Adoption of the Child Act and the sub-regulation, sub-legislation in the form of the regulations. So it, 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 it's, it, it's complex in, in the fact that it's a statute mixed with common law because there are decisions on the interpretation of the act from the, the High Court, Court of Appeal, and now this recent decision from the Privy Council. Um, but yes, your first port of call, if it is that you wish to adopt a child, is to attend the offices of the Children's Authority. Now, I mean, I know you don't speak on behalf of the Children's Authority, but of yeah. course you have knowledge in terms of the process and procedure. Yeah. Can you tell us, I mean, because from watching the website of the Children's Authority and the procedure, why is it that it is so complex to well, adopt uh, persons or children in this country. All right, well, I'll just bring us to the Privy Council decision. So the Privy Council decision was given by Lord Stevens. Lord Stevens was a, the head of the family court in England and Wales up until 2017. Um, he, so he, he basically is the go-to person for family matters when it comes to Privy Council litigation. Um, he wrote that decision. The decision is 19 pages long, um, and the advocacy is still on the Privy Council website. Now, give when, us give us an overview of what exactly brought you to the Privy Council or your client. Yeah. So, so the, to get to the Privy Council, you have to start in the High Court. Yes. So, um, the the cause that brought us to the High Court was just the non consideration of. Ms. Sukan's application. So Ms. Sukan would have applied to adopt a minor, and we would use the words AB, so we do not disclose the identity Indeed. of the child. All right, so she applied to adopt AB in 2016, um, following a process that was disclosed to her by the Children's Authority, a prescribed form process. So she filled out the prescribed form, she dropped it in, and she heard nothing back from them. She then followed up and was told that they had a policy against nurses adopting children. Um, she retained attorneys in the first instance, not my firm. So I am for full completeness, obviously, I hold a brief for Ms. Sukan. Okay. Um, she retained attorneys. They did not file the judicial review then, back in 2016 or 2017. But um, in 2019, she retained up my firm, Hoven Associates, and we decided that the case had merit. Um, in that there was no decision made. Yes, there was a decision communicated, but they did not say when that decision was made to avoid 
her application. Okay, so let's say, because um, I read the judgment. So basically, yeah. uh, in order to adopt, you have to express interest. Correct. You have to, you have to um, complete a, a form, Correct. Um, which is prescribed by law. Correct. Uh, now tell us um, exactly what would have occurred. Is it that she did not complete the form correctly? So they, they, during the court proceedings, they indicated that she did not submit what you call a police character certificate. Um, and what we indicated to the Children's Authority and to the High Court judge was that um, if it is that the Act does not give a sanction or does not give a consequence for not submitting a document, then it is un unlawful or unreasonable and not fair for you to implement a sanction that this does not exist. Um, the Court of Appeal found favor with that argument and the Privy Council found favor with that argument. Um, the High Court judge did not, hence the reason we appealed, we won in the appeal. Um, the Children's Authority appealed to the Judicial Committee and we won in the Judicial com before the Judicial Committee. The, the appeal took from High Court to the appeal, it probably took two years because it involved a minor. So um, it was an expedited process. So usually to get to the Privy Council, you take eight to 10 years of litigation. This, so, this matter from High Court straight to the Judicial Committee took two years and we, uh, we have gotten leave to challenge their decision not to consider her adoption application. And you are saying that in the particular application form, yes. uh, there, was no, there was no regulation or no uh, description so, to, to so, hand so in what, a what, what would be character? advised, and I believe both the Court of Appeal, Justice of Appeal Smith, and the Privy Council, Lady Arden, and Lord Stevens, they, they advised the Children's Authority that it, it would be prudent given that they are the sole um, adoption agency in this um, Twin Island Republic, that they put on their prescribed forms what the regulations say. Because the nature of adoption it is not just for the prospective adopters. It is for a benefit of children, orphan children, who would like to, to live in a family household. And if it is that persons who would like to adopt are unclear as to the procedure and to the sanctions, which there are none, um, then naturally it, it is not it is not fair so yeah and, and, and then one of the one of the things that that the privy council would have noted was that you have a form but yet you have no description on how to complete the form correct right correct so we we, we now we arguing at, at that level of the judicial committee you you really look back at trinidad and you wonder why 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 we have reached this stage you know we, we i i would say that we are not a banana republic but when we go before the highest courts in the, in the majority English-speaking Commonwealth, and they, they, they look at your, 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 your way of doing business, then you, you're, really, you're really embarrassing the country on a, on a high scale. You know? Why it is, what prevented the Children's Authority from putting a description as to how to fill out the form? Not everyone who goes to adopt a child is an attorney at law. And naturally, given that attorneys, batteries of attorneys on both sides made it to the Privy Council on an interpretation of a form, it shows that the form was not clear. You know, so literally, I, Lord Stevens was advising them to have brochures, have workshops, have seminars, educate the public. Because what you want, you want the, the best people, the kindest people to adopt children. No, no. There's yeah. a situation where, and I mean, and, and, and it is on record mm -hmm. in that one of the the um, the personnel of the um, of Children's Authority mm -hmm. uh, basically indicated to this lady that, well, she's a nurse. We don't we don't allow adoption to nurses. Yes. So that, that, um, that is, is that is that not prejudicial? Well, that's part of our challenge. So we have challenged the decision to or the policy of not allowing nurses to adopt children. So naturally, when children are abandoned in hospitals, it is the nurses who are the, the first port of contact in terms of taking care of these children. So it, most of the time in my practice, and I've been practicing for the last 11 years, it is these nurses who care for the children that are abandoned at the hospitals prior to the Children's Authority even becoming aware that a child is abandoned. Now, this particular nurse, Ms. Sukan, she applied to adopt a particular child, A.B. And why is and it that she would have applied to adopt that particular because child? She was taking care of the child for about 18 months. So the child was abandoned at birth. And she took care of the child out of her salary, out of her care and love um, for the f first 18 months of the child's life. And within a year, she applied to the, to the, um, Children's, to the Authority. Children's Authority. 
to adopt that particular child. And the, 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 the adoption manager, actually, I wouldn't call the name, but her office was the adoption manager. She, she said to her that, you know, we don't allow nurses to adopt children. And, and that is part of our case in terms of challenging that, that policy behind it. And, and certainly the, the, the Court of Appeal was not in agreement with that policy. And that policy, on the evidence before all three courts, went unchallenged. But where is that policy stated? Is, is, is it stated on the website? It is an unspoken policy? Uh, does policy trump law um, in, in certain proceedings well, like this? Well, in, in judicial review proceedings, we stick to the law. All right, the law on judicial review is quite clear and settled in our jurisdiction. The threshold for leave is very low. And if it is that you have a policy, you must publish that policy. The policy cannot be an unspoken social policy because I am a lowly nurse. I am not allowed to, 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 uh, to have an opportunity, an equal opportunity to adopt a child in, in the Republic. Um, so naturally, we, we are frowning upon that policy if it did exist. And certainly, we will be asking the court to make declarations against that policy, which we have done. And with respect to persons who have to be guided by completing these particular forms, now, I know there was another issue with respect to the Children's Authority not providing feedback yes. uh, in terms of, okay, whether your application needs readjusting or whatever the case Correct. is. How so, do you deal with certain things like that while someone is waiting 18 months to get feedback yes. and when you go, you're not getting any required feedback and some, you want some, to adopt? Sometimes you wait years and, and you, you don't get feedback. So in, in this particular case, legal letters were sent with no response. And that was what caused the court to say that the conduct of the authority was disgraceful. Because when a, an attorney sends you a letter, at the very least you acknowledge the letter. Even if you don't have your, 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 your counsel's opinion as yet, you can acknowledge it and say, I will get back to you by X, Y, Z date. I mean, and, and, and it's just basic social graces in terms of, okay, what is expected? I mean, when someone writes to you, I mean, it, you ought Cor to be... Correct. To it, it, it's basic social graces, you would say, but it was not done in this particular case, unfortunately. Um, hopefully, hopefully, the nature of the Children's Authority is relatively new. Because before that, we had the adoption board. Um, we are hopeful that they would learn from their mistakes and they will correct their mistakes. And certainly, if it is that there are sanctions attached to the regulations, that the relevant line minister would act with due dispatch and move, move those, those um, ad amendments in parliament. Now, for I just before you continue, now someone is asking um, on, on our live, did, did she give a reason why nurses can't adopt? No, no reason was given. No reason was given. Literally, th that was left tread bare. And another thing that was indicated was that um, it was told to, to Ms. Sukan that, well, um, you will never be able to adopt. Correct. So, so we, we initially, we wanted to quash the entire adoption list. Um, naturally, we, we abandoned that argument at the Privy Council because um, we, I've, we found it unfair. We found it unfair, um, bearing in mind that other prospective adopters would have been affected if that entire list would have been quashed, because she was not even considered to be placed on the list of prospective adopters. So what happens to this particular child now who, yes. who um, your client wishes to yeah. adopt? Is it, that, is it that the court is going to now grant um, that particular leave for her to no. adopt? Or so how so does what, it work? what happened was that at the Judicial Committee, we were asked by the board if we can take instructions with regards to decoupling the, the prejudice that would be caused to AB by virtue of these judicial review proceedings. Um, because we remember, we are at the leave stage, asking permission to challenge. The leave, the, the permission to challenge reached the judicial committee in two years. So we have not even challenged as yet. Naturally, the, the, the court stayed the adoption process for AB pending the determination of everything. Um, so they asked us, we, we took instructions. Um, the Children's Authority had placed AB with prospective adopters in February of 2019. So by the time we were before the Judicial Committee in 2021, he was already two years with a prospective family. So it, that being in mind, we, we, our client instructed us for the benefit of the minor that she would not go specifically for AB, However, she would like to be considered to adopt a child 
any child in the republic. So, so all right. So, so I mean, therefore, that, that that's a that's a win in itself. Yeah. Now, 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 just um, for the avoidance of, of doubt, I mean, I know the public is hearing these legal terms. Yeah. Now, let's just walk us through again the stage in which you can be. Uh, granted leave uh, to apply yes. for judicial review and what exactly yes. is leave and okay. how can one decide, okay, they want to challenge a decision okay. of the state? So, so leave, leave for judicial review. So any, any, any public body, whether it's a state-funded company, so if it is, it's fully funded by the state, um, say like Carney 1975, it's still, it's still wrong, <laughs> although yes. it's in um, liquidation for many years. Um, any public authority, statutory authority, like the Children's Authority, the police service, any authority, you, or even a ministry, or a government, or a permanent secretary, you can challenge a decision that they make, which you, if you think the decision is not fair, did not give you an opportunity to be heard before they make their decision, you can challenge it in the courts. They call it administrative orders. Um, most of the time, these, these, these administrative decisions can cause you um, to suffer loss in terms of constitutional damages, meaning it can affect your property, it can affect your life, and therefore you can join a claim, a constitutional claim with a judicial review leave. So leave, in, in the view of the judicial committee, the threshold is low. How low? I would say very low. And when you say the threshold, do you mean that you can any any decision, wrongful yeah. decision that you think is wrongful, yes. you can apply for? Yes, leave? but you have a limitation period. The limitation period is three months, so you must move with due dispatch. If it is you find, and it is three months from the date you are aware of the decision that has negatively affected you. So if it is for some reason your permanent secretary stops your salary, and you 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 were unaware. For one reason or another, you're unaware, but you notice the salary stop and you ask the public secretary, why you stop my salary? Um, you can challenge that. You can challenge that by way of a review of the decision and you can ask for damages because your salary is property under the Republican Constitution. So um, yeah, so even with um, Ina Sukan, um, one of the arguments was that um, we, we did not have merit in our argument. And I think uh, so there was something respect to delay because the delay, I delay. mean, it wasn't three months you made it the was application. About, it, if we would have gone by the timelines of the Children's Authority, the delay was about two years. Um, now, the, the, the delay in the eyes of the Judicial Committee is, has, has to be balanced against prejudice. So once you can show that there's no prejudice to the statutory body, then you can delay. You can, you can ask for an extension of time, so to speak. And, 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 and yeah. in this instance, there was no prejudice to the... To the child. So the, the main prejudice was to the child. Um, and what happened was that while Ms. Sukan was waiting for her decision, um, they placed the child with other adopters. So the, the, the delay in terms of the prejudice was not, it was not her... It was self-imposed prejudice by the Children's Authority. All right? Um, she actually had during the course of the judicial review proceedings to file another constitutional motion when they decided to actually place the child. No, they decided what they did was they, they told the prospective adopters, because these prospective adopters intervened. They told them to go ahead and file in the family court for, to adopt the child, while the judges in the High Court, Court of Appeal and Privy Council were deliberating on whether or not leave should be granted. And we challenged that in the, in the constitutional court. And yes. it is moving forward. So, so therefore, um, the question uh, remains, can anyone adopt a child in general? Do you not, have a constitutional not, right to adopt a child? You have a, I would say it's a fundamental right because it's not just a right for the person to adopt, but it's also a right for the child to be adopted. All right? So I would say that is a constitutional right. Um, I think Justice of Appeal Smith agreed with me, and certainly the Privy Council agreed with me. It's a fundamental right. Um, if you deny me that right to adopt a child, I will challenge that. All right? Um, and you have to deny me on grounds. What they were saying is that she did not comply with regulations. If the regulations do not say what are the consequences of not complying with the regulations, then they are of no moment. Now, now one could argue, because I checked on the uh, Children's Authority website, and they basically have the process and all the documents that you need to, uh, well, so to, to get. Well, they have listened. So, so therefore, <laughs> no, but, but, but the question is, if they don't have it on their form, Yes. Can they now argue, well, you can go on our website and see mm -hmm. everything there. 
because they have police um, uh, background Correct. check and everything Correct. like that. But Correct. But so, is there an so, argument so that, you can, that they can say that, well, you're supposed to do your own research? No. And no, not rely no, no, on just a no, phone? No, no the, the reality is you are a public body burdened with the authority to assist persons in adopting children. That is, that is your remit. That is your basic um, statutory authority. That is your power. If it is you, you omit to act and to guide persons in terms of a process, then you, persons are allowed to challenge it. You can't just simply say, go on a website. All right, if I go on the website and I, I fill out everything on the website and, and, and then nothing else happens, the burden is now on you to tell me if I fill out the form right or wrong. And you, said, you should tell me it's within a reasonable time frame. Or, or, yeah. or not just leave it as it is and not tell you at all. And I think that would have been the issue in terms of a lot of things in this country. Uh, there's, no, there's no feedback. Correct. So, right? so for example, we, we as practicing attorneys, um, we know that if we do not comply with certain rules of the court, there may be sanctions. At minimum, you'll have to ask for an extension of time to comply with the rule, all right? But the Privy Council, and you, you know that Kieran Matthews and the Attorney General have said that there are no implied sanctions. What the, the rule makers have to do is say what the sanctions are. And that is what the Chief, Honorable Chief Justice does. He issues practice directions and tells the attorneys, watch, this is the sanction if you file your submissions late, especially for procedural appeals. Yes. You know, there's this new practice direction in 2018 which said that if you file your submissions late, your, your procedural appeal is automatically dismissed unless the chamber court gives you an extension of time. And when you say right? a, a procedural appeal, what exactly do mm -hmm. you mean for, for the for for, the Well, listening? there are different types of appeals. There are substantive appeals and procedural appeals. Procedural appeals are basically appeals on the rules. The, our, our rules of court are governed by procedure, and if it is that you are of the opinion that the judge did not deal with the merits of your case, but just dealt with it procedurally, you file a procedural appeal in a short space of time. Procedural appeals are usually filed within seven days of the decision and, and usually heard within a month or two. So it's not a substantive appeal, which usually takes about three years, roughly. Yeah, so that's the difference between the procedural and the substantive. But getting back to the, the, yeah. the, the, the law on adoption, we are saying that if it is that you, you have put your things up on the website and you have given um, guidance, if it is the law does not put a sanction, then you cannot impose a sanction. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 it, and it's just simple and, and, and possibly I could imagine the exorbitant costs that this simple matter would have caused yes. um, and it may have been left in abeyance if, if not challenged by, Miss, by, by your client, Ms. Sukan. Correct. And, and, and I, I, there, there are probably many Ms. Sukans out there, you know, so when we, when we would have taken the matter up initially, we obviously worked on a pro bono matter. Um, because of the justice that we found in the matter. Um, naturally, when we reached the Privy Council, we could not have worked on a pro bono basis because you, you, it's a lot of time and it's a lot of cost involved in dealing with a matter in the Judicial Committee, even though they have allowed us to do it virtually now. Um, well, now the state would have to bear that cost. I mean, before you would have had to travel to the United Kingdom in London with your client yeah. as a cost to itself. That's a cost to so itself. So not many persons yeah. were able to afford Correct. Privy Council going directly to the Privy Council. Correct. So they, they now give you that option. You have the option whether or not you wish to hear it virtually um, or you can come up to the Judicial Committee if you wish. But... Um, Naturally, I would wish to hear it virtually. <laughs> virtually, of course. Now, now, now tell us, um, I mean, I know the Children's Authority representatives are not here. I mean, maybe in another setting in terms of how they would now deal with this um, particular mishap, I should call it. Um, is it that uh, legislation need to be amended or is it just a matter of they just need to fix their, their, their application for? Okay, so, so for example, one of the regulations that was up for interpretation by the Judicial Committee was Regulation 3.2. Regulation 3.2 sets out what uh, application for adoption must be accompanied by. So, for example, it has a photo identification, it has a police certificate of character, it has a medical certificate. It, what it does not do is say what are the consequences of not complying with those um, regulations. So what um, Lord Stevens was suggesting was that the law 
as developed by the Judicial Committee, has moved from telling persons what are mandatory and what are directive to telling persons who are reading the law what are the consequences. Well, this is interesting because it means that now we have to review a lot of, I mean, from licensing directly down to every, everything in this country in terms right. of in terms of the rules, because a lot of a lot of in public bodies they yeah. apply rules, yeah. but you don't ever see the sanctions, you don't ever see Correct. the consequences, as you said. Correct. So now, so now that basically opens an entire floodgate Co for well, litigation well, or for interpretation I, of the. Of, I, I, I wouldn't say open. I, I think the floodgate has already opened. Well, fact. Um, if 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 to challenge if if Parliament. Mm -hmm really wants to treat with it, they should treat with it by t advising persons, all right. If I do not submit my police character certificate, is my application a nullity? Is it that you just, what, what are the sanctions? So therefore this is, so therefore the fact that the Children's Authority rejected the application, did they, it, is it an argument that it was an implied sanction? And is well, it, are implied well, sanctions that, well, actually well, well, lawful? Well, that is what they were arguing. They were arguing that because there was no police character certificate, then it is a nullity. It is of no moment. Um, the, the Court of Appeal did not agree with that, and the Privy Council didn't agree with that. Um, the law must be made clear and simple for citizens, because not everyone who walks in to the children's authority walks in booted with their attorneys. You know? um, and as, as I told you, we, we had to reach the Privy Council to interpret the regulations. So even attorneys could, could err. You know? in, 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 yes. in, in. So, so therefore, okay, uh, for I, we have... I mean, you've got granted leave. Now, what, what happens? Is it that now the, uh, it, it is challenged further? Yes, so, what, what, yes, so we leave have, haven't been granted. Now she has her day in court. So literally, she was just asking that her matter be heard. And we, what is the timeline? What, what is the procedure to go through that? Well, that, in, my, that? in my experience, judicial review shouldn't take you more than one year in a high court. Um, if you do not like the decision of the High Court judge, you probably wait three years for an appeal and probably are two years for, to, to go to the Privy Council. So now this has to go to trial or, or you yes. can basically file submissions with yeah. your arguments? Well, if it is that the evidence is, is very juxtaposed, meaning the facts are not dead on, then you can make an application to cross-examine on the evidence, and then it, that will be a full trial. But usually, in public law matters, it's via affidavit evidence, written submissions, judge gives a decision. And, and if, if you don't like the decision, you go to the higher court. You go to the higher court. Yes. So, so, so therefore, the, the adoption process, it, it's not that it is flawed, but it's just that the, uh, the issue surrounding the initial application needs to be revisited. Correct, correct. Correct, <laughs> correct. <laughs> because, um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, if, if, if you look at it this way, I mean, I, I understand it's a rigorous process because they need to vet you properly. Yes. Um, but communication. Communication. Is where it goes. Yeah. I suppose we, we, a human, humanitarian approach, you know, um, at the end of the day, persons come to adopt children because they, maybe they love, genuinely love children and can't have children of their own. And likewise, children would like to not live in the orphanage and would like to go to a household and have a family. Um, so it works on for the benefit of both sides, the child and for the prospective adopters, if we can get it right. But it must be done fairly, equitably, and within the remit of proper practice and law. Correct. So for Correct. any closing remarks um, um, be, be, in, before in we go? Of, in terms of closing remarks, I think it, it is always good that um, decisions of the Judicial Committee be highlighted. And thank you for your show for taking the, um, the, the, the bold step of highlighting that decision because um, transparency and education is important for us to grow as a society. Exactly, it is important for us to grow as mm -hmm. a society. And I mean, I, I, I know you along with a number of attorneys are, are champions for the people. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, sometimes you get, you, you get a lot of, uh, how do you call it, resistance. Correct. <laughs> Correct. But if I day, at the end of the day, you do what you have to do. For I right, thank you, thank you so much. For, for coming on the program and yeah. actually um, just imparting of the knowledge in terms of, of, of what there needs to be done. And hopefully in another program, we can have the Children's Authority come on mm -hmm. and give us exactly, succinctly clear as to how is it that they go about this um, adoption process without having to now defend their actions in, in court.
Transparency. Transparency, <laughs> correct. Transparency <laughs> is the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for it. Much obliged. Uh, so it's a wrap, guys. You have been watching Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. Of course, you can check us on podcasts with Strictly Legal with RondelDonoa.com. Uh, so be viewing for another time. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.